All right, so we mentioned in the previous video that there's two forms of electron microscopy, TEM and SEM. Uh, this video, we're going to go over transition electron, transmission electron microscopy, or TEM. So we're going to go over how, what the different components of the instrument are. Uh, the first is the electron gun. Remember, in electron microscopy, you are not irradiating with, with visible light. Uh, you are irradiating samples with uh, electron waves, okay? High energy electrons, we said up to like 100 kilovolts. And so the, there's, there's several different electron sources. Um, one is tungsten. Tungsten has a very low work function, which means you can remove electrons from it very easily. So you basically uh, apply a voltage to, to tungsten and then that fires off electrons out of it. Um, another one that's used is lanthanum hexaboride. There's some others, they have different costs and, and, and benefits of each. Some are more, uh, more powerful, some are more durable, et cetera. Uh, and then you have these electromagnetic lenses, right? You don't have uh, glass lenses, you have coils. And so it looks something like this, electron beams going through these different poles of electromagnets. And then these are the coils, right? And you're able to uh, uh, control the strength and the direction of this, this, how this lens bends the electron beam by playing with the current and voltage that goes through these co coils. And then, uh, you know, part of what makes this thing all so expensive is that the whole instrument is under high vacuum conditions. And so there's a series of pumps, vacuum pumps, um, that bring it down to the correct pressure. And you need this because, uh, you don't want your electrons, your high energy electrons is bouncing into to, to air molecules and ionizing air, then, then the electrons aren't gonna be able to be used in this microscope fashion. And so how do you make an image? Uh, the common way is that, you know, so basically this is sort of a schematic of what the TEM looks like. You have your electron gun, um, then the, the electron beam goes through the series of these uh, electromagnetic lenses and then uh, it's going to go through your sample, okay? It's gonna transmit through your sample. That's why it's called transmission electron microscopy. And then you're gonna get the transmitted electrons um, hitting a fluorescent screen, okay? And that, when, if it hits electrons, the screen fluoresces and that gives you your image. Um, and your image basically is a result of beam electrons that are scattered by the, the specimen versus those that are not, right? Because um, if you have an area where there's not much in your sample, a hole in your sample, let's say, the electrons are just gonna go straight through it. But if you have something there, okay, then the electrons are gonna scatter off, maybe not be detected at all or, or scattered at a different direction. And so this is how you build contrast in your image and you build an image. Um, so transmission electron microscope versus scanning electron microscope, which we'll talk about in, in a bit, um, it's, it's an optical instrument uh, in the sense that it uses lenses, right? It uses electromagnetic lenses to form an image. Um, as you'll see, SEM is, is not an optical image. Um, there, we don't use any lenses, but we use uh, electron optics to direct the beam, okay? And you're basically scanning the beam back and forth, rastering it, kind of similar to, in some sense, like an AFM or an STM. Um, Trans the good thing about TEM, one of the big benefits is that uh, you can get really, really good resolution. So just like STM, you can get uh, down to individual atoms. Amazing thing, right? You can visualize ind individual atoms, resolution of about 0.1 nanometers. Downside of TEM is that you need very thin samples. Um, so you're talking like a micron or thinner. And sometimes this can be very hard to prepare a thin sample, you know, you're, you're saying, your sample just might not be amenable to TEM because you can't prepare such a thin sample. So there's all sorts of tricks of trying to get a thin sample, but sometimes it's just hard. SEM, you don't need this, um, but it has not as good of resolution, closer to about five nanometers. Depends on, on the instruments. So here's a TEM, a polio virus. Um, uh, I'm sure there's COVID TEM images out there, COVID-19. I searched and couldn't find any easily. Um, but I'm sure, sure they've been reported. Uh, one thing you can do with TEM is you can actually have a more focused electron beam and actually scan it. 
across the surface. This is called STEM, scanning transmission electron microscopy, sort of a hybrid between TEM and uh, SEM. You kind of get the best of both worlds. Um, and this has really high resolution. And so you can do things like um, look at individual atoms. Again, these are individual atoms, uh, platinum atoms inside a platinum nanoparticle. Just, just crazy stuff. You can measure like mean distances between the atoms. You can look at um, areas where you might have atoms for some reason that are further apart than other atoms, right? I mean, it's just, just absolutely wild. All right, so in the next video, we'll, we'll dive into SEM, scanning electron microscopy.